So some combinations we can do with a bong sao lap sao. So we all know once you bong sao, right, the arms cross the center, gives you this, this quadrant, right? So you can either have your hand underneath or above, and we'll talk about why. Okay, you, sp you, you split the hand and that gives you the chop. Now when we chop, you want to be like a whip, right? So you chop. Now obviously in training we always chop the chest and we hit the chest and we get some pressure release so you get used to striking. But in reality you're hitting the neck, you're hitting the temple, you're hitting the, the, the uh, pressure points in the jaw, you're hitting the side of the jaw, you're hitting below the ear. So there's all these pressure points in the face that you can hit, right? You hit the, the throat. It's, it's, it's a very, very powerful strike, right? Yeah, so that's why we have to be careful and hit the, the chest in training. You don't want to not hit because if you practice by hitting like this, you never release any pressure or power. So you want to hit the chest and get that use of releasing. And it also gives you the, the, the ability to get the timing to touch the body and know that you've touched the body. So you know how far to penetrate. So you have more control. More control also gives you more power, right? More control gives you more skill. More skill gives you more power, right? So you want to have that power control, skill control, right? So for us, we always hit the chest. Right? You want the elbow to be outside of your hip. You don't want the elbow to be crossed because now that can be pinned in. Right? The idea of this is a bong sao. You're, you're not vulnerable on this side because their arm has crossed the body. Right? So that's another thing people say, oh, your elbow is up, you're vulnerable. Well, in chi sao, we do that all the time because you're not vulnerable because the hand is over this side. Right? So when I come to here, you're vulnerable, not me. Right? <laughs> okay? Because I can eat high and low. So anyway, when I do the bong sao, my hand is underneath when the bridge is shorter. When the bridge is a little bit longer, then my hand comes on top. So if you're in cheese out, mostly it's underneath because the bridge is always short. So it's much more efficient to bring my hand underneath to grab their hand and just clear their hand to strike. We're not trying to grab their hand to pull them straight away. We're just clearing that, that line, the center line, so the hand can leak through very quickly. Some people do it where they clear it, bring the hand back and strike, they telegraph it. You just want to just clear it and then strike straight away. It's much faster. Right? So once I clear it, I can strike. The time I go on top is when I press my bong sao a bit more forward to press someone and then they start to push back and then my hand is already out here, right? Because I've already, I've already pressed them forward. So if I have a fox out, my hand will come back a little bit. Then I can come over, over top. And that's very powerful for, for more aggressive techniques we'll do a bit later, right? So we have both positions, either hand underneath or hand on top, depending on the range, right? So if I'm in a close range position here, this hand underneath is quicker and cleaner. If my bong sao extends a little bit because I've pressed into you, then obviously this is not very good because now my, my shoulder's going to engage too much, right? And I'm weaker here, right? They can trap you here, right? So here I can grab on top and use that pressure to sink and get a more powerful strike. So that's the difference between the range of where you come under or over. Right? So once you've once you've done your lap sao, okay, now we need to think about combinations of the lap sao, right? So depending on what they do will depend on what combinations you have. So first of all, we'll go off the idea that they didn't respond to the first hit. Right? If they respond to the first hit, it changes everything, which we'll do a bit later. So here, I bong sao, I strike, I get the hit. Right? So I get the hit. So once I've hit them, I've, I've hit them, right? they haven't responded, their head's gone back a bit. I can now strike with the same hand again, like a back fist to the temple. Right? So if I strike the neck, I can then strike the temple. So I do a bong sao, I strike, and then strike. This is a whipping strike. Where you just whip into the temple, right? So it's a whipping strike of the knuckles, right? This is not necessarily a knockout strike, they can knock people out, but it's a good stun. As we talked about before, these sort of stunning strikes are like half beat strikes, right? So the strike to the neck is going to obviously cause a lot of problems, and then the temple is going to cause some disruption to the nervous system, to the brain, and then I can follow up with a palm strike to the side of the head or a punch to the side of the head. So you can you can use that as a, a technique to stun somebody for a big shot, right? Because if you, if you hit someone and you throw a big shot, then they, they duck out of that shot, they duck out of the way, they see a big shot coming. But when you stun them, and they, they stun, and then bang, the big shot will hit, right? So there's a, there's a reason why we do it. Right, so here, I strike, I stun them, and then I strike. Okay, so when I strike the first technique, right, I don't need to change my footwork, I'm straight on. Okay, I slightly uh, relax the whole body and strike with the back fist. Now, when I punch with the rear hand, I'm gonna turn my feet slightly, so I can turn into that person and cut into them with that punch. Okay, so here, one, two, three. Okay, so here, chop, stun, that will be your finishing strike. 